Welcome back guys, Christian Byer coming to you from Fabic Caterpillar dealership shop here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Today I want to go over a tool that I think we use more in this industry than any other industry as far as automotive and uh, on highway trucks. So let's get started into this. But first, let's all just take appreciation of this American flag. Die grinders. It's a tool that in this industry and in this shop, I use on a daily basis, anywhere from one to many more than one. For jobs from the standard gasket removal to cutting off tubing, steel stock, bar, or anything else that we need to fabricate, cleaning out bores, cleaning up pins, or fixing damaged tooling. I use a large variety of die grinders and have used many of the ones that are made today. So I would like to share my thoughts on the different brands that I personally own and my likes and dislikes of them. Starting on my left, I have a cheap central pneumatic. This is just a straight standard die grinder. Somebody actually gave that to me. I have used these cheap die grinders when I first started, uh, specifically from Harbor Freight, and I have blown them up within a year of use. As much as we use them, they just don't hold up when you buy them cheap. The next set that I bought personally after uh, using cheap ones for a while were these Cornwell ones. These I believe are third horsepower, both the straight and this 90 degree, which is actually a gearless die grinder. They both seem to work pretty well. You can adjust the airflow on the end of both of them. My biggest complaint with them is the sheer noise. They are very, very loud die grinders. Also with the 90 degree, the length from where you grip it to the base of where you attach your tool is extremely long in comparison to some of the other die grinders I own, especially once you have a little bit of a shaft on whatever brush or uh, disc holder you might be using. I just feel like it kind of takes away from the control aspect of that tool. Next up, my favorite pair of die grinders when it comes to anything under a half a horse. These I believe are just under half a horse, a little bit more than the third horse ones. They are the IR Quiet Series die grinders. Part numbers on the 90 is the 5102 Max, M-A-X, and the 5108 Max. These two die grinders are just beasts. You can run any size of roll lock on them, uh, and they, they hold up really well. I've had them for a little over a year. They are so, so fast and so quiet in comparison to my Cornwall ones. I just really enjoy them uh, as far as accessibility because of their really small compact size. They get into places that some of my other die grinders won't get into. Obviously, they're much shorter than even the Snap-on or the smaller Cornwall ones with a little less power. Um, as far as the 90 degree, one really nice feature is this locking button on the side. I at first thought it may get in the way uh, during use, but it really has not bothered me and I haven't noticed much. Also, they feel really heavy and solid in the hand, even in comparison to the Cornwell ones, even though they're so compact. One really nice feature of this 90 degree is how compact the length of this is and how you can grip right up on the head of it and feel like you have good control over it. I absolutely love this die grinder. Another feature that I really like about this in comparison to the 90 degree Cornwall and the 90 degree Snap-on is the trigger being on the bottom side. This allows for really good control of the speed as you can grip it. Variability of the speed is easy and the trigger is really easy to use even with the safety mechanism on there. By far both of these are my favorite die grinders when it comes to smaller die grinders. When it comes to large die grinders, I have used the Matco one horsepower die grinders, but by far I do prefer the Snap-on one horsepower. As you can see, I have the 90 degree, the standard length straight, and the extended length straight. When I really need to get some grinding done, uh, cutting through something thick or reaching deep into a bore, I go to these every time. I really, really like these because of the sheer power they have, very smooth action, and just dependable overall so I never really mess with the speed control even though they all do have the screw speed control on them um, but 
I find that leaving them wide open for the kind of work we're doing and what I depend on them for is the best for me. Like I mentioned, in comparison from the IR to the snap-on, this top side control is just a little awkward to use, so I tend to just run it full bore. Um, I'm not doing anything that's too, uh, too touchy, I guess. Um, usually it's some big grinds or a lot of times I'll run a bigger wire brush on it and I'll actually put the handle on it in order to control that. So as far as big powerful things, these things are beasts. I do know that Matco's one third or half horsepower series are really nice and actually com pretty comparable to these IR uh, die grinders and I have used those and enjoyed them. But I have eight die grinders here and this suits me pretty well at this point. That is what I have for you in this episode. I hope that you pick something up, maybe learn something. I also, I will link the IR die grinders in the description so that if you'd like, you can check them out. They're very reasonably priced for what you get. Uh, I've, like I said, really, really enjoyed using them. So you may want to check them out. But that's what I have for you today. Christian Beyer, signing out.